Hello everyone. I'm going to talk about the Dirac Bergman algorithm, which is a recipe for converting a system with a singular Lagrangian into a constrained Hamiltonian system. For those of you who are experts on this subject, you'll notice that I don't have any new insights. I'll just be applying the algorithm as it was understood by Dirac and Bergman and a few others by the end of the 1950s. So this talk is really intended for the non-experts, and I suspect that most researchers in theoretical physics are non-experts. They only know bits and pieces of the algorithm, probably in the context of the specific theory with gauge freedom. So a theory like general relativity, Yang-Mills, string theory, and so forth. But the Dirac-Bergman algorithm is actually much richer than what we see in any one example. Let me give you a brief summary of the steps in the algorithm. We start with a singular Lagrangian. By singular, we mean that the second derivative of L with respect to the velocities is not invertible. Then compute the conjugate momenta P equals partial L with respect to the velocities and define the canonical Hamiltonian in the usual way as PQ dot minus L written in terms of the P's and Q's. It turns out this is always possible, even though the definitions of the P's is not invertible for Q dot as function of P and Q. Next, we identify the primary constraints, which I denote by phi sub a. So a is an index that ranges over the number of primary constraints. These are constraints on the p's and the q's that follow from the definitions of the momenta. The primary Hamiltonian h sub p is then obtained from the canonical Hamiltonian by adding the phi's with Lagrange multipliers. Next, we apply Dirac's consistency conditions to identify higher order constraints and restrictions on Lagrange multipliers. We do this by computing the time derivatives of the primary constraints using the primary Hamiltonian and Poisson brackets. Setting those results to zero can lead to further restrictions on the p's and the q's. Those are the secondary constraints. Or they can restrict the Lagrange multipliers. We then apply the consistency conditions to the secondary constraints to identify tertiary constraints, and so forth. The next step is to define the total Hamiltonian, which is obtained from the primary Hamiltonian by incorporating the restrictions on Lagrange multipliers. This leaves some subset of the Lagrange multipliers free. Next, we separate the constraints into first and second class. First class constraints have vanishing Poisson brackets with all other constraints. Second class constraints have non-zero Poisson brackets with at least some of the other constraints. We then split the total Hamiltonian into the first class Hamiltonian, which has vanishing Poisson brackets with all of the constraints, and primary first class constraints. It can be shown that this splitting always occurs. Next, we apply the Dirac conjecture, which says that all first class constraints generate gauge symmetries. We can define the extended Hamiltonian from the first class Hamiltonian by adding all of the first class constraints with Lagrange multipliers. Finally, we can replace the Poisson brackets with Dirac brackets and eliminate the second class constraints. If we like, we can also eliminate the first class constraints by imposing gauge conditions. The reduced Hamiltonian is obtained from the extended Hamiltonian by using the constraints and gauge conditions to eliminate some of the variables. The time derivative of any phase space function is then given by the Dirac brackets with the reduced Hamiltonian. As I mentioned before, this formalism was worked out by Dirac and Bergman and their collaborators in the 1950s, and it's described in a number of books, but what you won't find anywhere in the literature is a complete example of the algorithm. The examples that you can find are not really complete. They're designed to highlight just one or two steps in the algorithm, not the full algorithm from end to end. So with that in mind, I decided to develop a complete example, which is presented in this paper. This is the Lagrangian. It's a relatively simple looking system with just four generalized coordinates. But the Lagrangian is singular. So carrying out the Dirac-Bergman algorithm, we see there are two primary constraints, two Lagrange multipliers, two secondary constraints, one restriction on the Lagrange multipliers. There are two first class constraints, which are mixtures of primary and secondary constraints. There are two second class constraints, which are also mixtures of primary and secondary. Both first class constraints generate gauge symmetries, and I discuss this in detail in the paper. The extended Hamiltonian then includes both of these gauge generators. I then assign gauge conditions and use Dirac brackets to eliminate the first and second class constraints.
What's left is a reduced Hamiltonian that just describes a simple harmonic oscillator. What I'd like to do for the rest of this talk is show you some applications of the Dirac-Bergman algorithm to physical systems in classical mechanics. The first system is a pendulum attached to two springs. Here's the Lagrangian. The generalized coordinates are the angle theta of the pendulum rod and the Cartesian coordinates of the point where the springs connect to the rod. This Lagrangian is singular, so applying the Dirac-Bergman algorithm, we find there's one primary constraint and one Lagrange multiplier, one secondary constraint, a restriction on the Lagrange multiplier. The two constraints are second class, so they can be eliminated using Dirac brackets. So what I'm showing now is a simulation of this system with the equations of motion generated by the reduced Hamiltonian and Dirac brackets. The next system consists of three masses that slide freely along a ring. The masses are connected with springs. The generalized coordinates are the angles of the three masses and the coordinates of the point where the springs connect. For this system, there are two primary constraints and two Lagrange multipliers. There are two secondary constraints. Both of the Lagrange multipliers are restricted, and all four constraints are second class. Once again, what I'm showing here is a simulation that uses the equations of motion generated by the reduced Hamiltonian and Dirac brackets. This next system consists of four rods with masses at the midpoints. The rods are connected at the corners and slide freely up and down on the vertical posts. The generalized coordinates are denoted x1 through x4. They denote the height of each corner above the floor. Here you see the Lagrangian, which is singular. So applying the Dirac-Bergman algorithm, we find one primary constraint and one Lagrange multiplier. There is one secondary constraint and the Lagrange multiplier is restricted. The constraints are second class. As in the previous examples, this simulation uses the reduced Hamiltonian and Dirac brackets to generate the equations of motion. What's really interesting about this system is that it changes its character quite a lot if we simply move the springs from the corners of the rods to the masses. As in the previous case, the Lagrangian is singular and we have one primary constraint and one Lagrange multiplier. But unlike the previous case, there are no secondary constraints and no restrictions on the Lagrange multiplier. The one constraint is first class and it generates a gauge transformation. So this is a gauge theory. For the simulation, I've chosen a canonical gauge condition and reduced the system using Dirac brackets. The simulation looks qualitatively a lot like the previous case where the springs were attached to the corners, but the detailed evolution is actually quite different. I want to thank everyone for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to contact me.